Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In today's episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, we're going to make a Victorian crane washing line thing. E. Okay, um, that probably made no sense, uh, but um, this video is going to concentrate a little bit on um, slot punching and then also producing more, uh, mortars and tenons for your uh, projects at home. Um, the project I'm making is a, um, basically we've got a Vic Victorian, well I think it's Victorian anyway, if it's not Victorian it's a uh, post, uh, pre First World War uh, house we live in and um, it's uh, got very high ceilings and above the stairs it, uh, in the landing basically uh, there is very high ceiling, it gets very warm up there so what we want to do is, or we, I say Ella would like, Ella would like me to construct for her a um, sort of like a pulley system which has it's going to basically have two of these like Victorian style cranes with pulleys on that go down to uh, a pair of uh, not triangles but sort of like V shapes that have a bed on the bottom of them and on that bed is a series of wooden rungs that you can hang washing on to dry it's becoming colder here in the UK and wetter um, and um, traditionally we've just hung washing over the house um, and now we're going to be able to, hopefully, we're going to be able to use this in our own home. So you can lower it down, put your washing on, pull it back up again, and uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, this is part one of this series. So today I made the, uh, these are the uprights, these are going to be the pivot parts. Uh, and then these are the, uh, the arms for the cranes with these tenons on, they go on like this. Um, and then uh, this piece here is going to wrap around and then I'm going to make some brass pulleys and a little pin here and then a rope's going to come up, over, down and to another pulley here, up to a little anchor point here and then the bit's going to go up and down and then these can turn as well. They don't need to turn. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave you to it. The first part of the video, there was a lot of noise here in the workshop so I've just sped up the stuff that I'm doing but it's just general forging. Uh, you've all seen that before, if you watch the channel, if you want to learn about any of the things that I was doing in here, the set downs or whatever, go and check out the other, um, go and check out some other videos on the channel, but that's everything, I'll leave you to it, see you in a bit. Okay, it's very noisy down on the farm today. Um, Ruggie was next door just now uh, doing a lot of machining, hence why um, you didn't really get a great glimpse of uh, what I was doing with these pieces here. But basically what I've done is uh, I've put a heel on here. Um, I've then drawn this down ever so slightly just to, just to give it a bit of shape. Nothing, uh, there's nothing structural about it or anything like that. And then these are gonna be the bits where the pulleys are gonna sit. Um, and then these are my uprights, which I machined earlier on today. A um, bit lazy, I know, um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these hot and I'm going to forge uh, part octagon in here. I'm not going to take it right down to octagon, but I'm going to take it somewhere close. Um, and then um, I'm then going to punch, uh, after I've done that, or I'm just maybe just take the corners off ever so slightly. I just want it to look a bit, bit Victorian-esque um, in its structure. And then we've got to put the tenons on this end uh, and I'm, those tenons will go... Uh, in here, part, part way here somewhere, and then uh, there'll be some 20 by 6 strapping that's going to come up and support the weight ever so slightly. I hope 
Um, I'm gonna have to make a little bit of tooling for this as well. Anyway, I'm gonna get these hot, I'm gonna get on, and then um, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do about doing these, uh, these tenons on these heels here. Okay, so I'm making up these um, mm, 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 these tenoning tools. Um, these are the drifts, the slot punches, which I'm going to try and get through here. Now, this is a piece of forklift truck time, but it's quite thin, um, and I'm not 100% sure that's going to get through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a couple of whacks, give this bit hot, give it a couple of whacks to see if it goes through, uh, and then I might just clear it out with this um, with this piece of H13 uh, that I use to make the compasses. Um, or the dividers, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, anyway, and then I'm going to then I'm going to drift this through basically, and this is going to become our bolster. So we'll have a bolster, 
Uh, we'll have this drift um, and we'll have this sliding punch. But I'm also going to make a slightly longer um, piece of 25 which has got some very narrow tapers on. Just so uh, 25 by 6 this is or an inch by quarter I think. Something like that. Just so we can clear this out and have a really nice tasty bolster plate. So I'm going to get this hot and I'm going to show you me punching this through. Hopefully it's going to work. Genuinely don't know how this is going to go today. Um, so what I've done is I've got slightly lower temperature there. I'm just going to take my drift. Just going to line that up. I think I'd like to be able to use this as a punch um, as well, but I just think this is going to bend more than anything. Which is already done. <laughs> Oh, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that would happen. Anyway, I've just marked that up. I'm going to get this hot again and I'm going to use that H13 slitter. Let's get this through. Okay, let's try that again, uh, but with a H13 this time. I'm pretty sure this will go through. It's nice and tough, this stuff. Like a knife through butter, eh? A swell. Let's see if I can't find that quickly. And again. <laughs> this is bent as well. Oh god. <laughs> oh, trying to do really small, tiny stuff. It's hard work. If anyone tells you doing small stuff's easy and big stuff's hard, they're telling complete and utter lies. It's that. this drift to go now. It's got a slightly heavier hammer as well. I'm going to try and use... As I suspected, the forklift truck time isn't quite up to the job uh, and I've absolutely wrecked that drift wherever it may have gone to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of H13, this is the piece that was on that other slotter, I'm going to take it down to 25 by 6 and then I'm going to forge a taper on one end and I'm just going to use it as a standard drift and just hope for the best see how we get on. I'm pretty sure the H13 is going to be able to hold up to this sort of work. Um, I made this H13 drift, you saw me squeezing it out under the power hammer somewhat crudely. Um, I put two centre dot marks on here. I'm just going to... Are we tap with a hammer? Oh. Now, doing it this way means that there is a lot more material to move out of the way. But I'm really hoping this H13 edge is going to hold up a lot better than that forklift truck time, which currently it's doing. Um, a little off centre. I don't think I'm rushing a little bit. I don't think the geometry of this uh, the geometry of this slitter is very good. But we are pretty sure we're through. Yeah, we're done. And uh, that's, that's off. Well, it's almost off, at least anyway. I just need to go back through this way. And get this corner to break. Like so. Right. That worked really, really well. A bit of deformation on the end here. I always knew that that was going to happen. Now, we need to drift this through. Um, I really need a bolster plate whilst I'm doing this. There's no point doing this kind of work without a bolster plate. You just start, you're just going to lose, basically. Um, 
Yeah, so basically, get this hot again and run this through a bit. Okay, I was also not really enjoying using the hardy over there to drift this through. So I've come over to the vice, and hopefully. This isn't ideal in any sense of the word, but until I have the bolster, until I have the bolster, this is a reasonable alternative. Now, we're all the way through there, which is nice. So bring that there, just loosen that off, go back over to the anvil, straighten up and do a bit of tidying up. So these are our uprights. I'm just going to give it a go, see if we can actually do this. Um, I'm really gonna take my time here, that, um, doing that bolster I rushed a bit, I think. And uh, the more central I can get this, the better. I don't want it to wander or anything like that. Just get this nicely lined up here. Let's get this through. Okay. Try and be as straight as possible here. And also, once it goes a little bit below this temperature here, I'm gonna to have to stop and reheat because um, I don't want it to, I don't want it to, um, to have too much draw through with this because it's quite, you see how it's already starting to, already starting to pull that down. So I don't want too much draw through here. So that's our start. I'm gonna get this back in the fire and get it hot again. Okay, give you a slightly different angle. I'm hoping that I'll be a bit easier to forge him here. So I'm trying to keep this nice and straight as I'm going through, if I can. This is um, <laughs> this is petrified. It's really horrible when you've got a lot of commitment into something. And uh, <laughs> you've then got to do something that you're not so sure it's going to work quite as you had. Well, I'm sure it will work. I just don't know if I'm going to be very, very successful. <laughs> okay, right. So that's gone almost the entire way through. It's a bit... It's a bit wonky, which is a little bit irritating, but I think for this job, I'm being quite quick. It's not like I'm taking my time, really. Uh, I'm being quite quick here, so um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's something I can straighten up when I do the rivet. Uh, but yeah, let's do that a bit more.
slowly been convincing myself over the last sort of 10 minutes of doing really thin and that's that I rushed this <laughs> um, and I and I I could do better and I was thinking well <laughs> if I'd have made this five years ago <laughs> I'd have been ecstatic <laughs> a funny concept isn't it okay so that's our tenon they're like that sitting nice and tidy uh, and I'm quite pleased with that everything looks reasonably tidy uh, I've got a little bit of tidying up there's a bit of a burr and when I close the rivet obviously that's going to uh, that's going to um, make all the difference. Um, I'm not going to fix this together just yet. I am because um, it needs to be a 90. Uh, there's going to be a piece that goes in between. So just for the minute, I'm just going to leave it as, as it is. Uh, and then the next episode, we'll make the piece that goes here, punch the two holes in here. We'll obviously do the other one as well. And then make the brackets that are going to go onto the wall and hold this, bend this round um, and drill some holes in here. Uh, maybe forge one, drill the other, just depends. But um, so far, so good. Right, I'll leave it there, I think, for this evening. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making these. Um, I think one of the um, one of the things about A, doing the channel and B, having my own workshop is uh, sometimes it's good to push yourself. Um, that was very difficult. I found um, this process of making, punching this hole, getting very accurate, making the punch and everything, that was quite stressful. Um, it was very difficult, um, but I'm still learning. Like, like a lot of you guys out there, you know, you're starting out and you want to try things, um, but this, this for me personally was very difficult. I'm very lucky to have access to this H13. Um, and um, yeah, it turned out lovely. I'm really pleased with the results so far. Um, the next, the next thing to do, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to put um, a brace in here that's going to come up. Uh, and I don't know, I might put something in here, but I haven't decided what we're going to put in there yet. And that might just be too complicated. But there's going to be a bracing piece in there. Uh, and um, yeah, like I said before, we're going to do some uh, bendy round bits here and stuff um, but yeah so far so good awesome. I think that's everything thank you for joining me um check your comments down below let me know what you thought of this video and all that sort of jazz and um yeah thank you very much so remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and if you are a subscriber ring that bell for notifications because it tells you every time i make a video and i make videos randomly all the time um, <laughs> um yeah like i said before comments down below and let me know what you thought of this video and um that's everything. So I will leave a link up here to part one of the uh, wine uh, caddy thingy that we made. I will leave part one, not part one, yeah, part one of the Halloween special here. These are going to be some really good series. The wine caddy's already done. This is the Patreon and this is the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>